everybody, it's Molly A from Grill Meats Farm, and today we are gonna be making black and white donuts. A mashup of two of the best desserts, donuts and the classic New York black and white cookie. If you're baking along with me, make sure you have a donut pan because we're gonna be baking our donuts. I'm gonna teach you how to make a great donut batter and then to glaze them beautifully, so let's get started. So first, give your donut pan a little spray. And this will prevent the donuts from sticking. And now let's start the batter. So grab a big bowl, which you're gonna mix up your dry ingredients in. Add one cup of sugar. One and three quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour. And I always like to mix up my dry ingredients first because it makes things cleaner. You'll be able to use the same whisk to whisk up the dry ingredients and then the wet ingredients. You don't have to clean it off in between just cuts down on dishes. And then also add one teaspoon of baking powder and a half teaspoon of baking soda. These will help the donuts rise and get nice and fluffy. And then add three quarters of a teaspoon of kosher salt. It's always important to add salt to your sweets to bring out all the flavors. Also grab your lemon and a fine zester and add in the zest of your lemon. So just zest off the very top of that peel. Be careful not to go too deep because if you get down to that white part, that tastes too bitter. And this is a key element to the black and white cookie. Black and white cookies, if you've never had them, are cakey cookies that have lemon and a little bit of buttermilk, which adds great sourness and then they're topped with thick chocolate and vanilla glaze. And they're just gorgeous, and they're everywhere in New York. And when I lived in New York, I would eat them all the time. They were such a special treat. And using the lemon zest as opposed to the lemon juice will add a lot more concentrated lemony flavor. So just go all the way around. And then you can hold on to this lemon, stick it in your fridge so that it doesn't dry out now that it's zested, and you can just use it for another use. Okay, now that we've got all of our dry ingredients in a bowl, let's grab a whisk and whisk it together. So just whisk this to combine. Okay, now let's mix up our wet ingredients. So grab a big measuring cup and add half a cup of buttermilk. Black and white cookies, sometimes they have sour cream or yogurt, something that adds a little bit of tang. And then add a quarter cup of flavorless oil. I usually use canola or vegetable oil. And add this right in. And this is gonna make the donuts moist. And then also add a quarter cup of water. And now flavor this with some vanilla extract. You can just eyeball a teaspoon right in and almond extract. I always love almond in anything that's lemon flavored. It complements the lemon really nicely. And just a little bit of almond goes a long way. Oh, and don't forget your egg too. Now whisk this to combine. So this is a great all-purpose donut batter. You can switch up the extracts and add different flavors, and you can decorate them however you want. You could even add like spices to the dry mixture, like pumpkin spice or cardamom or cinnamon. There's a lot of different things that you can do with this batter. Don't feel like you only have to make black and white donuts today. And it's so easy. I love this because you don't have to get out your big stand mixer or an electric mixer. You just need these two bowls and a whisk. Okay, now you'll add your wet ingredients to your dry ingredients and whisk to combine. See, I'm only using the one whisk. This batter could not be easier. Be careful not to overmix it. Otherwise you could get like a gummy texture in the donut. You don't want that. Oh, I'm already smelling that buttermilk. Oh, and the vanilla too. Mm. Okay, how's your batter looking? Is it smooth? Good. 
Okay, let's fill the donut pans now. Okay, so it's easiest to fill the donut pans using a piping bag or a big zip top bag with the corner snipped off. So grab a big bag or your piping bag, stick it down into a big cup like this and fold the sides down and this will make it much easier to fill the piping bag. See, now you have hands free. Okay, grab a rubber spatula and scrape the batter right into the bag. Now fold the sides up and give the bag a twist so that the batter doesn't squeeze out the back. And then grab your scissors and cut off the tip so you have a half inch or three quarters of an inch opening. There we go. And now just pipe the batter right into the pans, filling them up halfway. See how easy that is? And you're only filling them up halfway because they will rise as they bake. I love baking my donuts and using my cute little donut pan. They're way easier to make than fried donuts. And they're healthier, so you can eat more. Gorgeous. See how clean that was? There's like practically no mess. Okay, now these are gonna bake at 375 for 12 minutes until a toothpick inserted into them comes out clean. These are looking great and they smell even better. I know yours look just as good. It helps to use a small rubber or small offset spatula to get them out of the pan. And just gently run your spatula around the edges and pry them up. And then you can transfer them to a wire rack to cool completely. And I'm turning them upside down because I like glazing them on this side. It's a little rounder and smoother. I just love how perfectly round these are. They are very geometrically pleasing. Beautiful. Okay, while the donut's cool, I'm gonna show you how to make the most delicious glaze. Grab a bowl and add two and a quarter cups of powdered sugar. And you still have your buttermilk from when we made the batter, right? So grab three tablespoons of that and add that to the bowl. And this will just enhance that slightly sour flavor. Next, add one tablespoon of light corn syrup. And that'll help this glaze get shiny. and then flavor it with a little splash of vanilla extract and a pinch of salt. It might seem like a lot of powdered sugar with just a little bit of liquid, but it will mix up. So grab your spatula and mix it until it's smooth. Okay guys, so this is what you're looking for when you're making a glaze like this. You want it to be as thick as possible, but still pourable. You want it to fall down the sides of the donuts, but when it dries, you want it to be opaque. And that's just gonna be the best look. So as you're mixing up this glaze, you can adjust it. If it seems too thin, add more powdered sugar. If it seems too thick and it's gonna be difficult to work with, add a tiny bit more buttermilk. Okay, so once the glaze is really smooth, you don't want any lumps in your powdered sugar, you'll be ready to dip your donuts. But honestly, I feel like this is a little bit too thin. I could still add some powdered sugar, so I'm gonna do just that. Just take the time it needs to adjust your glaze to get it to the consistency that's gonna look the best. So just adjust as you go. Are you guys getting an arm workout? 
you're earning your donuts. Okay, once your glaze is as smooth as can be, it's time to decorate the donuts. So grab a donut in your hand and then take your spatula and see how when you lift up your spatula, you create these glaze ribbons. Lay the ribbon right over the donut. And you're only gonna be glazing half because the other half is gonna get glazed with chocolate glaze. So just keep on going until this half is totally covered in glaze. And some glaze is probably gonna to continue to drip off, but that's why you have it on a wire rack. It'll just drip right down. Okay, so scrape off the bottom and then put it back down onto your wire rack and let's just keep on going. Every year for harvest, I make tons of baked goods for all the farm workers that help out. And so these were one of them. The farm workers went crazy. They love them because they're always drinking coffee. So you've got to have a donut with your coffee. I know you guys are going to love these too. Okay, we're almost finished. The last one. And now let's let these set while I show you how to make the chocolate glaze. So we don't have to do any dishes. We can just mix up the chocolate glaze right into this bowl. It's essentially the same recipe, just with some cocoa powder added. So grab two cups of powdered sugar, and then add a quarter cup of unsweetened cocoa powder. And I like using Dutch cocoa with this because the color is darker, but any cocoa powder will do. And then three tablespoons of buttermilk. A tablespoon of corn syrup. and a pinch of salt, and then mix to combine. And just like with the vanilla glaze, we want this glaze to be really thick. Okay, so this is looking a little bit too thick. Check that out. So I'm gonna add another little drop of buttermilk. And just the tiniest bit will go a long way. Let's get going on the chocolate glaze. Okay, just like this. And make sure you go all the way to the vanilla glaze. You could even overlap with the vanilla glaze a little bit because it won't show through. And then frost the sides and the tops of the donuts. Scrape off the bottom and then place it back onto the drying rack to allow any excess glaze to drip down. How good does that look? Are you guys getting good at glazing yet? I love this glaze because it hardens and it creates like the sugary shell on the donut and it keeps the donut moist. So it'll be moist and fluffy. Oh, I can't wait to eat these. And then place it back down onto the drying rack. Okay, now I'm just gonna keep glazing the rest of these with you. How's it going over there? Do you have glaze all over your hands yet? This glaze is looking gorgeous. It's shiny and thick. I can't wait to bite into these donuts.
Okay. And there we have it, our black and white donuts. I know yours look just as good as these. Shall we have a taste? <laughs> mm. Mm. So moist and delicious, and that lemony touch is perfect, and so much easier than making fried donuts. You guys are gonna love these.